Imagine you have all the advantages available to perform not only at your best, but above what you're capable of, and you still find a way to lose. It's like taking a gun to a knife fight, starting with a good distance away from your opponent, and then somehow you still end up with a knife in your chest. That's what we're talking about today. If you pick a top tier, lose to a mid or low tier, and then rage quit, you're not only bad as a player, but as a human being. The mindset of picking a top tier and getting mad when you lose needs to change. If you don't actually care, that's fine. You can make that excuse as to you not wanting to invest time in something like a fighting game, but that still doesn't justify your rage. If you get mad, that clearly shows you care enough when you lose to someone. You learn who the best characters are, who's the easiest to pick up, and you hit training mode to only spend time learning not about your character or others, but the few gimmicks needed that everyone says are broken. As you begin online matches, you see results, you're gaining confidence, but then there's a change as you reach a certain rank. There's more to a game than just the characters, and it's the player. It's very important that you learn and grow at your proper skill level and not with a crutch that'll just boost you. Because while you're at that level, you'll actually improve and grow alongside your rank. People are always trying to find a way to skip learning as much as they can and just want the positive results without doing all the hard work that comes before it. Why study for a test when you can cheat? Why learn a skill when you can hire someone else to do it? Why work your way up each level when there's a skip that will bring you to the top? People don't seem to understand the importance of the journey anymore. This is why I like Devil May Cry, because the character doesn't get stronger as the game progresses, but you, the player, improve as you have to face tougher enemies. People don't think and they seek any kind of instant gratification in which a fighting game should have no place for that. This ties into how our society has become lazy, comparatively incapable, and expect things to be spoon-fed to them. Look at how, in most fighting games today, there are auto combos or some shortcuts to playing the game where you don't need to have as much time in order to do certain things. We also see games that have characters where you don't need as much brain power to use them. In Dragon Ball Fighters. Broly can tank attacks and win neutral at the same time. This makes it so he doesn't have to think or adapt in order to best his opponent. It's a huge detriment in a person's mindset if they consciously choose to skip learning fundamentals just to lose to someone that has worse tools than them. This is because you will have gaps in your knowledge and understanding of how a game works which will ultimately stunt your growth. It's also a problem if they fabricate excuses and or avoid accountability for their losses as this will cause them to gloss over the details that result in their loss which is why we need to start at ground zero in anything we want to do. As humans, we need to improve and evolve and we can't do that unless we acknowledge our flaws and seek to correct them. You're not the best gamer in the world. You're not perfect. Take your losses as learning opportunities, check replays, see what you did wrong, and learn instead of following after a delusion that you can't, you shouldn't lose, or you're better than everyone else because you learn and not master a gimmick you want to abuse to make yourself look or feel good. People need to actually put in effort to improve instead of being mad that their shortcut isn't working out for them. In addition to that, People need to find their own strengths that suit them individually and improve upon that. Most fighting games are one on one and a majority of what decides the winner are the players. This means that you lost because of you. With the rise of esports, many gamers have had or have dreams of making gaming their full time job. With this in mind, there have been many of us that thought we were good and capable of being the best. Which, when testing our skills in an actual competitive setting, most of us get humble. If you had the right mindset, this should be where you make that decision to take the first step in a long and hard journey to actually becoming the best. On this path, 
you need to understand that the gap between you and the person who beat you is large, but with time and effort, you can close that gap and not only surpass them, but everyone else. Remember though, it is up to you to decide if you want to take that first step or give up right then and there. Another thing to keep in mind is the many steps to reaching any goal. It might be competitive greatness, content creation, or something else not gaming related, but remember that there are no shortcuts. It doesn't matter how good or bad you start out, we all have to put in the work in order to achieve success. It takes a lot of hard work to be good in competition because a lot of people want to be number one. So a lot of people will be putting in work to be better than anyone and everyone else, as is the world of competition. At the same time, I can admit that sometimes it is okay to want to give yourself an edge to help achieve your goals, but that doesn't mean you can throw a tantrum when things don't go your way. It also takes away from the accomplishment someone has to go through of beating you and it doesn't help you grow because you're consistently avoiding accountability and blaming everything and everyone else. There are no free rides to the top. We all have to work hard. The more lessons you have, the better you should become if you actually learn from them. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, maybe consider subscribing as I'll be making more videos like this in the future. Take care.